Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making four cards using the same sentiment but that look completely different. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you've been around my channel for probably six or more months, you might remember a collaboration series that I used to do with my friend Danny. It was called Four on Friday, and just about one Friday a month, we would stop by her on her blog, me on this YouTube channel, and share four new projects that use the same tool, technique, or product. Well, that kind of fizzled out, but we wanted to bring it back, and we're going to be making some changes to it. It still will be videos or blog posts that we feature on Friday, hence the four on Friday name. But instead of us both using the same product or technique, we are going to use whatever we want to as long as we create four new projects. So in the past, we might pick embossing folders and we both had to do embossing folders. Or if we were going to pick stencils, we had to use stencils on all of our cards. Well, now we will be using whatever we want as long as we each create four new projects. So make sure when you're done watching my video today, you go over and see Danny's four new projects and find out what her similar theme was. Today, I'm going to be using a printable sentiment that I made. And here's a little story time for you. Back from about 1995 to wow, 2006 plus when I had my daughter, I worked for Kinko's. Now you might know it now as FedEx Kinko's or FedEx Office. Well, after I had started there, I went to, I think it was Hallmark and they had this just cute little decor piece. It was like a, almost like a glass frame, but there wasn't a frame on it. And there was a sentiment on it that was similar to in a world full of copies, you're an original or be an original. And I just thought how fun was that because I worked at a place where all we did was copies. So recently I thought about that saying again and I wanted to make it to make some cards with. So what I did is I typeset it in different ways and I printed it out on a piece of white cardstock. I went with in a world full of copies, you're an original. And I think this could be used for lots of different purposes. It might depend what you write on the inside as to what the card occasion is for. Now, if you are a channel member, later today, I will have this freebie printable for you up in our community tab. Speaking of channel membership, I want to take this opportunity to do a little channel member shout out. A great big thank you and welcome goes out to our latest paper trimmer members, Wendy Easler and Susan M. Thank you so much, ladies, for your support. As I make each card, I will go to a voiceover and tell you quickly about the products that I'm using, but I will tell you that a lot of the products or tools I use today, they might not be available anymore, but don't let this get you down. The point of today is using your stash. Look at what you have, think of it in different ways and how you could put it together. You don't always have to go out and buy the latest and greatest to be able to create. If I do leave you with any questions, you can leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. 
When I created the printable for today, I did some single lines, some double lines, and then the one at the bottom was more for a circle or square die cut. I also left centered and right aligned the sentiments on the page just so I could have a variety of spacing when I went to make my final cards. I rough cut each of the sentiments out just eyeballing kind of a centered on my trimmer before I got started. For my first card today, I'm going to be doing some ink blending, so I went ahead and got out my brushes in their holder. If you're interested in finding out more about what I store my brushes in, I will link a similar item from Amazon in the description box below. I actually picked mine up at 5 below, so if you have one of those near you, you could check out the makeup section. I will be using this feather die from Spellbinders for some die cutting and I chose the two line sentiment where the text was to the right. Now this piece of textured cardstock, it actually has a little shimmer to it. I thought that would be fun since this is going to be a lot of white on this card. I also got out three Gina K Designs inks for my blending. The first thing I did was cut a piece of that shimmery cardstock to 5x7 and then I cut as many feathers from that as I could. I do have one more feather that I need to cut, but first I need to do a little ink blending because this feather will look a little bit different from the rest. It will be the quote unquote original in all of the white copies of feathers. I used those three Gina K inks and I just ink blended a small corner of that textured shimmery cardstock. Now the camera really doesn't catch it, but that shimmer does shine through this ink blending. Once I had that corner ink blended, I cut one more copy of that die so that I had a colorful feather. I brought in my little Fiskars photo trimmer and I trimmed down my sentiment until I had some nice even borders and then because this will kind of come in from the right side of the card, once I had it cut down, I hand cut a fishtail banner on that left side. Now it's time to lay out my feathers. I did bring in a piece of red cardstock for this, cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, but that's just so you could see the placement better on screen. You could definitely use any color scrap for this. The first thing I want to do is decide where my sentiment's gonna go and where I want my colorful feather to be. So I kind of lay those in place and then to temporarily tack that down, I bring in a small piece of scotch removable tape and I tape that feather down. Then I spent some time placing the white feathers around the cardstock piece and I did try to spread them out and rotate them and make sure that there were some hanging off all of the sides. I did end up with one extra feather but you'll see later how I use that to fill in some gaps around the edges. To hold these in place while I work on the next steps, I brought in some Glad Press and Seal and I cut a piece that was just slightly larger than the red cardstock area. Once that was done, I gently, slowly placed that over the feathers, trying not to disturb any, and then I pressed that down. At this point, that's when I realized I forgot to remove my colorful feather, and I don't quite want that here for this step. Once that's removed, I bring in one of my favorite die sets, my Hero Arts Infinity dies in rectangle. And I chose the third from the largest to die cut from the red cardstock. Once I had my new rectangle, I burnished each of the feathers so that I could pull the press and seal away from the red cardstock. It did take me a minute, but I finally got a little piece that I could peel that back. You will want to do this gently, and if you see that it's not picking up something, just stop, press it a little bit harder, and then try again. I used that leftover feather in one of the corners, and I just with my small scissors snipped off the excess that was hanging out of the press and seal. 
I want these feathers to look like they are floating on the card front. So I brought in my thinnest roll of foam tape. This is a quarter of an inch wide and I placed some of this on the back of each feather. I did have to trim some down to smaller pieces for the one on the edges, but once the foam was in place, I burnished that release tape with my fingers to make it easier to pull off. Once all of that release paper was pulled, I'm then going to place it on my card front. Now you will want to do this super carefully and slowly. It is sped up in the video, but once this foam is stuck, it is hard to get up. So when you think you have it where you want it, lightly place it down and then you can go ahead and push harder so you get a nice seal. Pulling back the press and seal on a floating card like this is almost as exciting as watching embossing powder melt and set. Now it's time to get my sentiment and my colorful feather placed on the card. For the sentiment, since it will be on top mainly of the feathers, I place ATG adhesive on the back and a small strip of foam tape on the right side. I did place my rainbow feather down so I knew where the sentiment should go and once that was in place I added foam tape to the back of the feather and got that adhered to the card front. Because this card is already so shimmery I decided that it didn't need any bling so here's a look at the finished card. Now we're on to card two. For this one, I chose the sentiment that was four lines and I will be using this globe stamp and die cut set along with some Gina K inks and a one and a half inch circle punch. To get started on this card, I want to stamp four globes in the gray ink. Now I did go ahead and get out my Misty and a scrap of white cardstock. I wanted to be able to set each of these stamps up once and then stamp it the four times. Now these are new stamps and they're kind of cheaper quality stamps. So I did pre-ink them with that Versamark ink so I could get a nice solid color. Once the first one was done, I rotated my scrap, stamped again and just kept rotating. Now this was when I realized I really should have done a square scrap because I did get a couple of these globes close together, but I brought back in my circle and thought it was going to be okay, so I kept going. Once the globe holders were all stamped, I brought in the earth one and I stamped that again in gray. For the special or the original version of this globe, I used colored inks. The circle in the background I stamped with ocean mist because this is going to be the water on the globe. And then the earth part or the land, instead of stamping with gray, I stamped it with grass green. The holder, because I wanted it to look like it maybe had a wooden holder, I stamped with a dark brown. And that way then you can definitely tell a difference between the copies or the gray ones and the original, the full color globe. Once everything was stamped, I brought in my one and a half inch circle punch and I used it to cut out all four of the globes. I just try to eyeball it centered as best as I could. For the final globe, the colorful one, I will be using the die from the set. I line it up as best as I can around the image. And then once I think it's in a good spot, I use a scrap of removable tape and send that through my die cutter. For the sentiment, I use that same one and a half inch circle punch. After seeing all of those pieces together, I decided that I wanted to stick with a circle for my colorful globe as well. So I brought in a scrap of white cardstock and punched out one more of those circles. But because I want this to stand out a little bit from those other circles, I did go ahead and emboss that with the Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder. Off camera, I cut and folded a gray card base, and because I need this to stay closed while I work on placement, I did put a piece of rolled up tape on the inside. 
Now what I'm going to do is put a little ATG on the back of each of my circles. I remove most of the tackiness from it with my fingers because I do want to be able to pull these up later for the final adhesion. Once each of those has a little tack, I start to lay out my circles on that gray card base. Once everything looked nicely spaced, I brought in my widest foam tape. This is three quarters of an inch. And on the back of the gray globes and the sentiment, I put a little square of foam tape to pop that up off the card base. Once all of my gray globes were in place, I removed the embossed circle from the card front and I centered this on a red circle that I had punched out with a different circle punch. This I will just adhere flat down to the card base because I will be popping up my globe with that foam tape. This was about the time where I was like, you know what? I really don't like this gray card base, but I didn't want to scrap this after so much work. So I brought in my Fiskars photo trimmer. I did remove the guide so I didn't have to worry about sliding all of that foam tape goodness underneath it. But if you do remove that guide, be super careful people, because that blade is sharp. I trimmed this so it was about four inches wide and then I placed this onto a white card base. Because it's a little bit skinnier, some of that white is peeking out from both edges and then it brings out the white on the white circles of the globe. I did decide that this piece needed a little bit of bling and a little more red. So I brought in some red gems from my stash and I placed a triangle of three on two sides of my globe just to help that stand out. Here's a look at the finished card. And now on to card number three. The stamps and dies that I'll be using were exclusive products that I got for attending the recent virtual stamp joy at Tailored Expressions. Look in your stash to see if you have anything similar that you could use. I will be stamping with Versamark and doing some embossing with Detail Black Embossing Powder. I brought in my Misty so that I could use that background stamp and because it is red rubber I do remove the mouse pad. Now stamping and heat embossing is something that most of us already know how to do so I'm going to kind of skip over that or not skip over it but while you watch me stamp the background, add the powder and heat set it, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. These are just fun little questions I try to ask during each process video so I can get to know a little bit more about you and you can get to know a little bit more about me. Now today's question is another one from a channel member. That is one of the perks if you join my channel. And Sherry P would like to know how many different types of adhesive do you usually have near you when crafting? You can leave your answer to today's question in the comment section below and don't forget if you do answer it to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. For me to answer that, I'm going to list the adhesives I can think are within arm's reach of me at all times when I create and I'll keep track of those on my fingers and then I'll tell you my total at the end. I always have my ATG, I have my art glitter glue, my big rolls of foam tape, mini dimensionals, regular dimensionals, mini glue dots, regular size glue dots. Oh, and I almost forgot my scotch removable tape. So that is eight that I use frequently on cards. That is quite a bit, isn't it? Thank you for the fun and thought-provoking question, Sherry. You might have noticed while I was working that I didn't really stamp the entire background onto the piece of cardstock. There's a lot missing at the top and on the edges, but that's okay because I am actually die cutting those out of the background and I ended up with five complete rainbows to use on my card. 
For this card, I chose the single line sentiment that was on the right side of the cardstock. Now I'm going to be using the cutting bar on my large trimmer to cut this sentiment out. I just kind of eyeball it with the plastic guide until I think it's at a good place and then I trim it out so it's a skinny strip. Off camera, I cut and folded a mini slimline card base. When I make my mini slimlines, I do it so it's six and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall when folded. I start to get an idea of how I want to lay my card out and so I can have a nice straight edge to place my rainbows, I add some adhesive to the back of that strip and once again remove most of the stickiness with my fingers. Then I spread out those rainbows trying to get nice even spacing across the card front. You'll notice I did the outsides first, the center, and then I filled in those final rainbows between those two. Once again, I will have a rainbow that stands out from the rest. So I thought I would stencil some clouds behind the one that will be colorful. To do this, I just got out a couple sticky notes and I placed those around the rainbow that I wanted to highlight. Because it didn't go quite to the top, I tore another one in half and finished filling up the card. The cloud stencil that I'm going to be using today was a recent extra special gift in a paper pumpkin kit and this is the perfect size for this little card. Now because I don't accidentally want to get ink in the two clouds below the edge, I did cover that up with a post-it note. Once that was in place, I brought in Gina K Designs, I think it's Ocean Mist Again ink, and I just stenciled some clouds in that little skinny strip on the card. Once I had stenciled clouds from top to bottom, I pulled those post-it notes off to reveal my stenciled section. I love how this turned out. Once the stenciling was done, I added some full strength adhesive to the back of my sentiment strip and got that placed on the card front, cutting off the excess there on the right. Now I have a line where I can start to adhere down my rainbows. The four rainbows that will not have any color get adhered flat to the card base. I used the same process as when I originally did it, starting with the outsides and going to the center, but before I can place down that fifth and final rainbow, I need to add some color to it. So I got out three Gina K Designs inks, as well as each of the arcs from the clear rainbow stamp set. I am going to ink up and stamp each arc in a different color onto this. Now keep in mind these were not meant to be perfectly colored in, so you'll notice there is some white area on each of the arcs. I just love the fun feel to this set. For a little bit more dimension on the card and to help differentiate the colorful rainbow from the black and white outlines, I used some mini dimensionals to pop the rainbow up off the card. I also didn't make this follow that straight across line of the other four, I raised it up just a little bit. To finish the card off, I got out some clear dew drops. If I can find these on Amazon again, I will link them below. And I placed three of these on the card front. And to adhere them, I just used some mini glue dots. About halfway through trying to wrestle the dew drops onto the glue dot, I remembered my jewel picker. So I brought that in for the remaining two that just picks those dew drops up nicely and helps set them down in place. Here's a look at the finished card. For my fourth and final card today, I will be focusing on this apple punch. I did bring in a large circle punch and a scallop circle, but I don't end up using those. For my papers, I chose this red pattern, a green card sock for a leaf. I pulled in some very thin cork board, but I didn't end up using it, and I got a piece of craft and then my white card stock. I got started on this card by cutting my white card sock in half and folding it for a top fold card base. 
Once that was done, I brought in the piece of green cardstock and I cut this into a piece that will be a mat that is three and three quarter inches wide by five inches tall. And finally, I brought back in the leftover from the card base and I cut a piece that was three and a half inches wide by four and three quarters inches tall. Because there is going to be quite a bit of white space on the card front, I did once again use my Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder. Using the apple punch, I punched out five apples from a scrap of white cardstock, and then I brought in the items for my special apple. I punched one apple from the red pattern paper, I punched a leaf from the green cardstock, and then a complete apple from the craft cardstock. I knew that on my final card, I wanted the white apple's stems to face a different way than the colorful apple. So I made sure to figure this out ahead of time so that when I trimmed off the stem from the red copy, I could place this down onto the craft apple base and the stem would be facing the correct way. Off camera, I experimented a little bit with the layout and I decided that I hated those white apples on there. So I flipped the embossing over so it's actually debossed and I'm going to adhere this center to the green cardstock. Then I switched out those white apples for some red ones. This way at least the special one will be different because those other ones will just be complete red apples. Once that was figured out, I brought back in my little photo trimmer and I cut down my sentiment so I had even borders on the top and bottom and just some extra space on the left and right to play with. Once the sentiment was trimmed down, I adhered the matted piece to the center of the card front and then I started working on the layout of all of my apples. Once I thought I had all four arranged in a nice fashion, I adhered the solid red ones straight down onto that embossed piece, just using some ATG and keeping them flat. I decided that I wanted my sentiment strip to only fill left to right the same area as the embossed piece. So I brought in my little photo trimmer again and I cut this down to three and a half inches wide. You'll see I did have to bring my ruler back in because I forgot what size I had cut that to. Once the sentiment was in place, I brought in some glue and I adhered my apple flat to that. I thought the fact that this was a different pattern helped differentiate those enough so I didn't use foam tape. Here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's four cards using that single sentiment. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to go visit Danny's blog post now. It is linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.